Welcome to Ultimate DIYer, and today is going to be episode four on how you can become a handyman and make up to a thousand dollars a day. So in this episode, we're going to talk about projects. What do you actually do as a handyman? And what is acceptable for you? You know, what is your skill level? And what should you be able to do? And before I do that, though, I want to read a couple of little uh, notes I made from the Internet on how much a handyman really makes. They say today in the United States, a handyman is going to average between 60 and 75 dollars an hour average on the low end so if you figure that out that's going to be 480 to 600 dollars a day what i charge and what they also say is more on the high end is going to be 125 to 139 an hour which is going to work out to about a thousand to eleven hundred dollars a day that to me is much more acceptable and it should be what you strive for now, before you freak out on me and you say, hey, you know, Ron, that's that's a crazy, that, I mean, how do you charge that kind of money? First of all, if you don't charge really by the hour, you're going to charge by the job, but you need to average around that amount. You're not charging somebody for your hour or, of labor and time. You're charging for things like your tools, like these. You're charging for your truck. You're charging for your advertising. You're charging for your insurance. You've got a multitude of things when you're running a business. You have a computer. You have a cell phone. You have fuel in that truck. You have all of these things that have to be added in. And when somebody's first starting out as an entrepreneur in this type of a business, they don't get that. And they undercharge everything. They're thinking, hey, in my last job, you know, I made 20 bucks an hour. And, you know, if I can make $25 an hour, I'm doing great. The problem is you're not taking into account all of the other expenses that you have. So you need to look at that. So you need to set your bar a little bit higher. The other thing that they made a note of I thought was interesting is working for someone else, the average handyman. Now, the handyman title can encompass a lot of things like an auto mechanic. Um, I mean, they, there's just a bunch. We talked about that in the first video. I believe it's the first. Might have been the second. First or second. But they're saying that the average in the United States is going to be 127000 to 162000 Now, that's without any of the other expenses. So now you probably brings into scope just a little bit more because that's working for somebody else, working for yourself. You should be pulling in that $100 uh, $139 an hour. So get that in your head. You know, you have to realize you will work that, that kind of money. Uh, it, it's a mindset that you have to get to. But now let's get into a little bit of, you know, projects. I made a list here. There's three areas that I focus on as my uh, or the ones that I really want to try to get and I, and I focus on. They're the big money makers and they're the ones that, uh, you know, that I enjoy doing the most. And the first one is going to be bathroom and kitchen remodel. Now, the only thing that kitchen I don't really like to do are countertops because I don't have the equipment to carry the big countertops in. Now, if it's a Formica top, I can do that. I have a little video where I actually did that for a customer. But as a norm, I don't really mess with the tops a whole lot. If they want wood tops, that's cool. I can tile the top, that's cool. But if it's carrying a granite top in, I really don't have the equipment or the manpower by myself to get those in to get them set. So everything else, though, I'll do from rebundling, hanging the cabinets, to refinishing cabinets and painting those cabinets, which is a huge market, by the way. Uh, if you repaint a set of cabinets today in the Texas area, it's going to run for a small set of cabinets, about 3500 If you've got a large set of cabinets, you're up there, up there around that seven, eight, even $9,000 range to repaint those cabinets. Now, you may think if you haven't bought cabinets in a while, you may be saying, Jesus, that's, that's crazy. That's a huge amount of money. Well, you're right, it is. But go price new cabinets, good quality new cabinets. I mean, I've known people right now that have spent fifty, sixty thousand dollars and up on cabinets. So yeah, it, it's expensive, but you can save yourself a lot of money. You repaint those, put new hardware on them. It's amazing. So bathroom installs can be things like you know putting in our bathroom uh, remodel. Will be things like putting in 
new showers, new bathtub systems. Learn your uh, learn your waterproofing. Learn Schluter. Learn Weedy. Learn how to use Red Guard. Those are all things that are very profitable, and they're going to make your customer keep coming back. And you don't want callbacks later because you have leaks. You need to learn that. But titling, titling is huge. You may hate it right now, but it can definitely pay good money. You know, learn the techniques. Uh, get in there and do it. Learn the you know the cool textures to put in bathrooms. And that's speaking of texture, my second group of uh, projects I like to focus on are going to be painting and drywall. A lot of people do not like doing drywall. Um, I get it. A lot of people don't really even like painting. I get it. But you know what? Both of those things are not that hard. You just have to take your time and learn how to do it. Tape and embedding, there is an art, but you can learn it. Texturing is probably one of the most art parts of that field, but you can learn them. Just pick one, start learning. Try to learn to imitate. If you get a special project and they have a special texture, you try to research it, find out how they've done it. Now, I will tell you, texture is very individualized. The humidity of the day they did it, the way they mixed the, the mixture, the way they sprayed it, the way they spread it, the tools that they used. There's so many variables, but you'll learn over time how to try to simulate, simulate or emulate what they actually did. So from that point, though, uh, also in the drywall painting, I would look at power washing. Get yourself a good power washer. You'll be power washing the house. You'll be power washing the driveways, the sidewalks. Uh, patios, uh, decks, just be cautious on the decks. If it's a newer deck, you don't want to destroy the wood. If it's an old deck and you're just trying to get a year or two more out of it, you may eat up a little bit of the wood cleaning it, but you'll recoat it, seal it, stain it, and the customer will get a couple more years out of it. But you do need to be cautious and do not over spray, especially on really good wood or uh, if you're dealing with a, a composite. Composite, you're going to do a very light spray on because you don't want to take any of the surface off of that. I mean, they're staying gently all the way through the composite. So, you know, you've got your power washing, your drywall, your painting, your kitchens, your baths. The other thing I do is exterior repair and, say, installation. You can install gutters. You can repair eaves. You can, uh, masonite is terrible from the 80s, and there's still a lot of it out there. You have to learn what it is and learn how to repair it and replace it with siding or something similar to that. There is... Uh, mortar around bricks that need to be repaired and fixed from the cracks. I get that a lot. You've got all kinds of things like that on the exterior of the home. You've got decks that you can build. You have pergolas. You have fences, which fencing is a huge market. Um, and that's anything from chain to wood fencing to uh, privacy block type fencing where you're using the big uh, cinder blocks. There is so many, so much area there. There's caulking all the way around the house. Now, of course, if I'm painting the way around the house, I'm caulking anyway. But you, your project could be just to go recaulk all the windows and the doors, things like that. Uh, replacing the ends, the, the bottom pieces of the wood at the garages. They always rot out because people let the water, let it hit the concrete and water sits there and rots the bottom out. So there are many things like it, even sealing the garage door itself, repainting garage doors all by themselves. You can make an old garage door look like brand new. And I do have a video on that you should look up. So you have that that you're dealing with. Now let's talk about some of the small projects. The small projects that I think that are very interesting, I did make a few notes on that, but it would be things like furniture assembly. Like if you're dealing with IKEA uh, type furniture, I, I say the IKEA, the that is actually a, a very lucrative, you know, project that you can do pretty quickly. But it's like anything else I have on this list. If it's a small project, you need to have a, you need to have the customer put together a list of probably 10 to 20 items for you to do so that it's lucrative enough for you to go out. Like I said, I do not start my truck for less than 500 bucks. It does not make sense. So the IKEA type furniture, you're gonna, you've are you got that assembly. You've got things like baby proofing. New couples that have babies in the house, they need to secure the doors and things like that. They're not getting any sleep. They're up all night, they're tired. You come in and you secure those doors. You secure all of the plugs and make sure that nothing can be poked in those plugs and, and hurt someone. There's That's a very easy thing for a handyman to do, and especially a beginning handyman to learn how to do. You've got garage cleanouts, very simple. You're going in, you're going to straighten up, clean it out. You're going to haul off the stuff that's there. Sometimes you'll put it out on the curb, depending on the trash pickup at that person's home. 
but most of the time you're going to haul it off in your own trailer, get rid of it, or the back of your own truck. The cool thing about that is a lot of times you get to keep the things that are in there that they don't want anymore, and you can either sell them on things like Marketplace or Craigslist or eBay, or, you know, you may be able to use them yourself. So you have a whole other little source of income on top of actually the cleaning process. And if you're really smart, you can talk to them about building the shelving and stuff for them in there so that they have places to put, you know, say bins so they can have a whole set of bins and have all their stuff organized. So there's so many things that that can lead to. So we've got the garage clean out, baby proofing, furniture assembly. Let's look at, uh, say, door hardware. So installing new door hardware should be, that should be something a handyman should be able to do it much in his sleep. You're going to learn the processes of how you put in all the different types of doorknobs and door hardware because each manufacturer is slightly different. You're going to learn how to adjust your, um, the actual hinges on a door so that it will close correctly. The striker plates are huge. Personally, a lot of times in striker plates, I try not to move the striker plate because you'll wall the little holes out. So I will try to file that hole just a slightly bigger on the plate because if it's just moving up and down in the ebbs and flows of the seasons, so say it's wet, the wet season and everything has swelled up and it moved the door up a little bit and now it's not working. If I can take and file that down just enough for it to work, chances are when it goes back down, the house settles a little again the door will still work. Otherwise, you're going to be out there twice a year, at least, trying to readjust these doors. So, door hardware, though, is, a, is very profitable and something you should learn, and it's not that difficult once you get used to doing it. Hanging the door is the same thing. Once you learn how to do it, it's not that difficult. And there are tools that will help you hang the door where you almost really don't even have to think about it anymore. But, uh, Gutter cleaning is huge. Now, I talked about earlier about putting gutters up, but cleaning the gutters on the outside is a very big deal because at least twice a year, you're going to have to clean those gutters. If you don't, that water backs up, goes over, and goes into your eaves or up underneath your shingles, and you end up with a lot of damage and rot. You can also install covers over those that will keep those leaves out. You can do that as an extra charge. Now, you may be thinking, well, now I just messed myself up and I can't come back and do the gutters next year. Well, I guarantee you, they're going to be so happy with that, they're going to find other things for you to do. And you're still going to probably go around and check those for any leaves that have piled up around those anyway, and make sure that nothing is able to come down and, and you know, cause damage on the house. But gutter cleaning is very good. You've also got uh, the window washing. Window washing is really big. Uh, I have a good friend named Da Vinci who has his own window washing company, and he makes a very good living just doing nothing Pretty much nothing but the windows. The you can in the residential area you can do that fairly easily. Even light commercial, pretty easy. If you get into heavy commercial, you're going to have to have special equipment, lifts, and all kinds of things to be going up, up, you know, these buildings. But for smaller projects, that's something most handymen should be able to do pretty easily. So I would definitely look at washing the windows, cleaning the windows, especially if you're going to be talking all around the new windows. You might just go and throw that in you know, as part of the deal. So, you know, I'm going to caulk these windows and I'm going to wash and clean the windows for you. It hasn't been done in a while. So, you kind of have a double edged sword. It's kind of like the power washing we talked about a while ago. If I'm going to paint a house, I'm going to power wash it first. I'm going to get the dirt and the grime and all off. And so, that's added in my cost. So, now I've got uh, the window washing. The, another big one is going to be hanging pictures. I just did a project for uh, David, who owns. Uh, Toyota Bourbon in Texas, and he has a, a museum of cars. We hung pictures all the way around his mu museum, and I used a laser level, set the line all the way around the room, and hung the pictures all at the exact same level. And there are some tricks for hanging in pictures. I'll probably make a video pretty quickly showing you how to do that, but that is a very profitable area for the handyman as well. So we have uh, hanging pictures, and the same thing of all the hanging pictures, hang, hanging uh, flat screen TVs. Now, that's just part of the deal generally when you hang a flat screen TV. A lot of the homes, especially older homes, they don't have a way to get the cables behind the TV. So you install a kit where you can actually fish that wire into the wall and have your plugs and everything behind the TV as an upcharge. And you turn that little project into a fairly major project, but you make their house look much better 
they get rid of whatever they had to set it on to begin with and it's on the wall it's nice and there's no cords and lines hanging everywhere so we've got that uh basic landscaping is another great one for a beginning handyman if you are just starting out you can treat bushes you can put down mulch i just released a video recently on putting mulch down uh, you can plant trees you can plant the bushes not just treat them you can plant you can put down grass saw saw it you can even see you can mow i mean there is a, a million things that you could do when it comes to landscaping you can put down landscaping block for patios i for my own small concrete pads for customers i don't usually do the big ones i have a, a good friend Raphael, who does that for me but if it's a smaller one i'll do it myself and i have my own mixer so it takes a lot of that work matter of fact i think i have a video doing that for strokers if you'll look for that video but we have um so the landscaping, you also, it kind of goes hand in hand with landscaping would be like pool maintenance. So in pool maintenance, you have um, things like tile that pop off the sides that you need to put back in. You're gonna use a, a good uh, mortar in there and, and get that in and waterproof it. There's a technique that's very easy, easy for you to learn. Around the pool is the same thing. A lot of that mortar wears up just like it does on the side of a home. And you need to read mortar and clean up and, there's filters that can be changed. There's actually the, the basic maintenance of just getting the leaps and things out of a pool, cleaning it, scrubbing. There's so many things there that you could do as well. I have a good friend, uh, Ryan, who, who I went to school with, who actually builds the pools and he does an amazing job. So the, you know he makes his living on nothing but building pools and has done that for, I guess, decades now. But my point is, is there's a lot of these little jobs that you can pick up and you can learn and you don't have to specialize just in that area. So we have pool maintenance. Uh, then the, there's two areas left that I have here that I had written down. One of them is going to be HVAC. Now on that, that's going to be mainly just changing out filters and cleaning the coil. So if you can do that, those are simple, but you're not going to make a lot of money changing a filter. So what you have to do is you need to make sure that you've got other things set with this customer that when you come to change filters that you're going to do. You know, that could be cleaning out the coil outside. And it could be uh, have other things going around, checking vents, cleaning vents. I mean, you may have other things in the house that you just need to kind of do on a regular basis that would, um, you know, help that rate because you don't want to drive across town just to put a little filter and an HVAC system, you're not going to make enough to make that work well. So you just need to make sure that you're combining things that maybe are require maintenance. Just like in your dishwasher, your dishwashers, most of them today have a filter that's out. A lot of people don't know that. And that filter needs to be taken out and cleaned out. You could do that at the same time you do the air conditioning filter and you do a coil clean. Now you turn that into a project if you're going to make a little bit more and you let them know you know, say a, a few weeks ahead of time, hey, I'm scheduled to come out. If you've got anything you're going to want me to do, just put it together on the list. And if you could get it to me and email me, uh, you know, the, a few days before I get there, that'd be great so I can plan. And you would be amazed at how well that would look. So the last thing I have on my list, and I'm sure, like I said, I've left a lot of them. So if you do things that you think are very simple for a handyman or whatever that, that I should put on this list, be sure you leave me a comment and let me know. But the last one, I and mean, I think this actually is not necessarily a small one. It can be a small one, but it can also be a, a big one. And that's attic insulation. In Texas, especially, our attics get extremely hot. And if you do not insulate it, that heat migrates down through the ceiling and into the house, and you are experiencing you're miserable. I just worked on uh, a customer's house here recently where they paid an absorbent amount to have this attic insulated. And their bedroom was way back in the back of the house, the back of the head, real dark. Nobody ever really wants to crawl back there. Very hard to get back there. I crawled back there doing some venting where I was sealing the vents and spraying the spray foam around the vents and realized that over the master, there was not one drop of insulation anywhere. And the master was always burning up. So I ended up having to go get insulation and, and a hose and had it blown and get it blown back in that back corner so but that can be anything from small uh that can be anything from a small insulation job all the way to a large insulation job so 
and you can do either blow in or you can do roll. And if you get really good, there's a lot of homes built before 1980 did not have any insulation in the outside wall, especially in the Texas area. So you can actually cut holes in the top of the walls on the outside that can be plugged after you're done, but you put the hose in and you'll spray and fill those, those openings, crevices in the walls with the insulation. something out of this today and if you uh, did be sure you subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification so you know about all the upcoming videos as they're released and get leave me a, a like and a comment i appreciate that a lot and i hope to see you guys on the next one